following all these highly professional speakers, I'm just a farmer from Olka, so I'll just go through our presentation and, um, uh, and also thank my wife and Phil, son, for turning up with me. So. Um, we have two properties about nine kilometres apart. The flags on Thunderbolts Way is about 3,500, 3,600 acres, predominantly steep basalt soils uh, running out to moderate um, plains country. Kentucky Blue, um, Topdale Road, comprised about 5,500 acres, of which about half is, excuse my microphone problems, um, half runs down a sort of steep gorge country which we don't really use very much of. Uh, we run a few heifers in wintertime and they're pretty hard to muster getting them out. Um, we have a, a pasture improvement program, only uh, fescues, prairie grass, um, new coxfoots, red and white clovers, and uh, along with plantain. Our rainfall ranges from about 38 to 40 inches up to about 60 inches on the eastern slopes and falls. And our altitude is quite high, uh, 1,200 to 1,350 metres, and it gets a bit chilly in wintertime. We get down about minus 15 on one of our properties, so it's probably colder than most people like to experience. Um, we run predominantly Angus cows with some limits and infusion, and we do a, have a crossbred program with our second grade cattle with um, Hereford uh, bulls. We AI about 280 heifers each year and about 140 cows. The reason we AI our heifers is to select for low birth weight um, calving to reduce our calving difficulties and also to, to synchronise our better quality cattle into an early birth program so we can then rejoin those heifers at 15 months old the following year, which then picks up a year from where we would normally be in improving our genetics. Um, the cows we select for AI are generally of sort of better quality cows that uh, you know, more to type that we want. We sort of try and select moderate frame uh, cows with good milk um, that can maintain their condition and rear a calf at the same time, which is very important. If they don't rear a calf, they go out the gate. Um, and we carry our cattle through to about uh, 330 to 350 kilos or 360 kilos dress weight for our steers and around about 280 to 320 kilos for our heifers. We do supply uh, JBS with quite a number of stock each year and um, uh, we're pretty pleased with their grid. Uh, years and years ago, I think grids were actually designed to bring the average price down and I think I'd like to see in the future that the grids are actually used to pay a premium for a better quality product. Um, so. We have a continual property um, development program. We've got, when we bought all this country over the years, it was very run down. It's very challenging country. It's very rocky, um, quite hilly. And uh, we've got a D8, um, 33 excavator, a track loader, blah, blah, blah. And we're sowing, we're trying to sow probably about five to 600 acres of new country each year with either ryegrass or as a short term crop, you know, we use uh, Italian tetraploids and diploids, or we sow down to a permanent pasture, which is probably fescues or uh, a fescue blend with a coxfoot and, and prairie grass. In our country, we use a lot more prairie grass than we have in the past. I think it's a terrific species and um, is doing very well for us. So our aim is to produce high quality, high energy pastures that will produce a, a good quality finished animal um, at milk and two tooth. And our aim eventually is to produce 1,000 kilos per hectare per annum of beef. And we're not there yet by a long way, but we are achieving that sort of results on part of our country. So um, the soil fertility, uh, slightly acidic soils, traditional New England tablelands um, uh, country. When we bought, the, bought our various blocks, our pH, uh, sorry, our coal wool um, P tests range from about 50 to 45. Sulfur levels are deficient. Um, uh, four and a half to five point two, and, and calcium chloride pH. Um, lime's important. Um, phosphorus buffering index is moderately high, um, but not out of the you know, not out of the realm. And um, we have an ongoing capital and maintenance fertilizer program. So, um, so we think the introduction of grading in Australia has been a huge benefit, and we we like the MSA system. It works for us. We can actually benchmark what we're doing. We can see what we're we're achieving, and I think David and uh, all those people involved in producing the whole concept originally, and I wasn't a believer initially, uh, and I, but I think as a, as a, produ a meat producing exporting company, uh, country, we need to have a good grading system that is understandable and 
can benchmark the quality of the animals we're producing. Um, so we're looking at tracking our breeding cattle, um, the, and we select our cattle based upon uh, a high 24-month dress weights, high SMA scores. So we're looking at SNP testing, um, which is a, a DNA test with a multi-trait um, information, to look at those cattle that produce both a high weight level at you know, 20 to 24 months and a high MSA grading. So here's a, a graph on beef consumption in Australia. In 2000, it was 35 kilos per person per year. 2017, is 24 kilos. We've been swamped by the chicken market, swamped by the pork market. Lamb's lost some ground. Uh, if we continue that trend in the future, we don't really have a good industry. Like, we'll be beef consumption in this country continues to fall. That, that's not a good outcome for, for beef production. So we think it's important that the quality of the product that you actually produce as a producer uh, meets the eating standards of the consumer, which is everyone's been talking about today. Um, so consumers by quality are shy away from a bad eating experience. Um, we produce, as beef producers, a premium cost article. Uh, we can't compete, compete with chicken or pork from the pro, uh, price of uh, production. And um, uh, I think I've got the wrong slide set, but anyhow, that's, that's all right. <laughs> Um, I don't know how that occurred. So, just give you an idea, two steers that we selected from um, a consignment, lot number 476, uh, had an MSA grade of 58.71, uh, $5.80 a kilo, we weigh 330.46 kilos, brought $916. The reason I put this up is the second steer, which is over 360 kilos, we dropped back 10 cents, but he was a better steer uh, with a 66.07 MSA grade, which is pretty damn good. Um, so we didn't get paid a premium for that second steer, but I think in the future we should be getting paid a premium for those higher uh, MSA grading cattle. Now, maybe Mark doesn't quite agree with that, but I think Mark does, actually. Um, so as a summary, um, as beef producers were exposed to Australian and international consumer purses and pallets, uh, it is imperative that the Australian beef industry is focused on producing a desirable eating product um, or find that beef consumption continues to decline. And thank you, and I'm sorry, I missed all the photos out of that slide. Uh, obviously, sent the wrong one. <laughs> but um, thank you very much. Yeah, yeah. <laughs>